So in this chapter, uh, processes to solve incidents and problems are mentioned. Proven techniques. Now, when we say they're proven techniques, this is not specific to the service desk. Problem solving, as I sort of mentioned to you just a minute ago, is something that we all do in our lives. It's kind of a um, feature of being a human being. We all sort of do that is uh, uh, we think about things and we come up with ideas and we apply those ideas to the issues and problems that we have in our life. Uh, that may be in a professional thing and it may be in just normal life, um, but we're all doing that. And so um, because we're all doing it, uh, you might say, well, there you go, we all do it. So that's all we need, right? But I guess the idea here is how can we do it in the most efficient and effective way? And so though we've all been doing it, I so suppose you could say that uh, we've been observing this as human beings for thousands of years, and it's become obvious that some ways of uh, solving problems are more effective. Um, so uh, here we have uh, some definitions that should be familiar to you. The definition and difference between an incident and a problem. Incident just being an outage, outage of um, interruption. We use this word here, interruption of service or quality. Uh, whereas a problem is going to have some kind of a root cause uh, that could require some change to the system. And um, the idea being that when we are presented with these, we, we uh, have some kind of a method for uh, coming up with a solution. Now, this diagram that I'm showing you here is straight out of an ITIL sort of presentation. ITIL being that library of processes. Um, I'm not sure how much we've talked about that in this course, but ITIL applies directly to the service desk. And this course or incidents uh, management um, is one of, actually incident management is one of the parts of ITIL, right? It's um, and it is shown here in this diagram, incident management. That's where our customers are coming to us with issues, uh, incident, incidents. And uh, then if uh, we can resolve those incidents, um, then that's where they stop. Um, but we, we would have some kind of recording. But if we cannot resolve those incidents, then, then we try and identify the underlying root cause, which is going to be uh, the problem. And so we go through a process called problem management. And um, problem management uh, is going to produce some kinds of reports, whatever, and um, we're going to record things and store them on, on um, in a knowledge base. Knowledge base is not actually mentioned here, but I think you can say that it relates to this monitoring service. Um, and uh, then if we find that something is uh, systematic, that the system is um, not up to the requirements, then we might have to implement change management. So these are all ITIL processes and um, problem management sort of um, works as you see with incident management and change management. Um, yeah. uh, you should be familiar with this by now, which is um, flow charting diagram, uh, uh, what would you call those icons or or symbols, symbols, uh, flowcharting symbols, uh, connectors. So that would be start and end. And if we went from one page to another, tasks or processes uh, are going to be um, uh, rectangular. Um, if it's a predefined process, it's going to have these bars on the side. Decisions are always diamonds. Um, so they're going to have an arrow coming in and usually two arrows going out because you usually branch out of a decision. Um, and then we have our um, results that come out of our processes or our decisions. Uh, start, stop um, is very similar to the connectors. And some would say that it's a subset of the connectors. Sorry. I th I'm just getting to get started on this um, previous. Yeah. All right. So, um, Incident and problem management, this is the activities. These are the activities that occur on the service desk. And we identify incidents and we log them. We create tickets. So logging is going to be creating our tickets. 
Then we go ahead and we investigate and diagnose, find the root problem, if it's a root cause, if it's a problem, resolve it and close it. And closing uh, actually re re um, sorry, relates to the ticket as well. We close a ticket when, once the incident is closed. Uh, the diagram on the right side here is uh, the important feature of that diagram is that it is um, a spiral. Uh, the idea being continuous improvement, the spiral is going up. So if you can imagine that one side of that diagram would be the quality of the system and uh, how that continuous improvement is achieved is we have these processes in our, in our uh, ITIL actually specifies these, um, that we develop a service strategy uh, and then we, uh, so a service would be something like, uh, I'll give you the example of services that would relate to something like this. The easiest ones is something like Arido. So Arido uh, would come up with some kind of a service strategy. They'd say, all right, so we've got lots of different customers. We're going to have a service strategy that is going to meet the needs of our customers. So for example, that it could include um, fiber connections, um, for in their home. It could include uh, various um, uh, 4G and 5G solutions for them because we know that they're carrying mobile phones with them. And it could include various um, uh, television watching packages. Those would, uh, that, so we have a strategy for that. Then we're going to take from that strategy and develop some packages. And, uh, you know, and um, they will be at different price points for our customers. And we will put together a um, service levels agreements for them. So some customers are going to have this package. Some customers are going to upgrade to a higher level of service. Uh, some customers are going to have HALA, etc. And so we will design those packages, right? Uh, then we um, then we roll those packages out and we operate them basically. Um, and we would be. Um, we would be continually looking at how those packages are servicing our customers and how we can improve them. So that's just the Arido version. So what about in a service desk at, um, as for example, at a college like ours or service desk? So they have service packages as well. To be honest, I think it's kind of equitable here that everybody gets the same kind of service, which is... Um, you know, you can call them up between uh, 7.30 and 3 o'clock and talk to somebody, or you can put a um, ticket in by yourself using, um, uh, using their uh, online, um, online request for service, uh, this type of thing. Um, that has all been designed, and that's part of the package. Now, having said that, I think they probably do differentiate uh, if only in an ad hoc way, certain customers. So, for example, the people in building one are going to have a slightly different level of service than um, students and uh, instructors. Uh, so, but there will be tickets, and uh, those things that I mentioned could be all happen in the same system uh, just by uh, altering the priorities set on the tickets. Um, anyways, and the idea being that they would vary often sort of maybe quarterly, every three or four months, they would have a look at their processes, have a look at the tickets. They'd have all kinds of reports coming from those tickets and they would see um, areas that, where improvements could be made. And then they would look at new design for new systems. That's basically what this is trying to show. Uh, so really I was just going to get started on this. Um, how are we going anyways? Uh, we still got we got only seven students here. Uh, you should know how to do a uh, flow chart. Here's an example of a flow chart. This is supposed to be a little bit humorous. You know, if you have a problem, what do we do? We Google it. Maybe we go onto YouTube. <laughs> uh, but uh, this could be referred to as a um, process that we go where we have a problem with our programming and then we go through this process and each of these process has um, um, steps to it um, and the flow chart helps us to represent that. So the term here that I want to highlight is this uh, term called uh, a symptom and um, the symptom is going to be the thing that presents as the incident 
when uh, somebody contacts the service desk. So the symptom might be that um, I cannot use uh, XYZ um, um, online site at the moment. So that's the symptom. And then we try and identify what is the underlying problem or the root cause or the probable sources it causes it says here this is problem analysis right we want to find what is the probable cause or probable source i should be careful with that word because probable cause is a legal term used in the united states by the police right um so no the probable source of the um of the outage so if the so we could just uh, we may not be able to actually restore that service until we find the um the probable source of it, which we identify, and it could be a problem that would have caused many more incidents to occur like that. So, for example, a switch being out or something. And uh, yeah, I, I mentioned what a, a sign is. The so on that example that I just gave you, the symptom would be that I can't access X Y Z um, site, um, uh, which is a online site. Um, the, the root cause could be anything from a hardware issue uh, on my computer or the network, or it could be some kind of a configuration issue on the site, or it could be even some kind of authentication issue. And um, at, on the service desk, we would be looking at that. And it, it, we would be looking also as we discover those things to see if this is something that has uh, occurred for anybody else. Uh, so is there some underlying issue that is causing this to come? Uh, okay. So this is trying to show um, problem management in a little bit more serious sort of a view in the context of the service desk. And so that's why you can see here, we've identified the three levels of support, which are the three levels in the ser service desk. Uh, yeah, thanks, Aya. Um, so level one, level two, level three, and just to sort of summarize this problem um, management method, if you like, or it or instant incident or problem management, uh, what we're doing is we try and resolve all issues. So the issue comes in, we try and diagnose the problem. That is to to know what is the underlying cause, we try and resolve it at level one. Some things are resolved at level one, and then we check to see that the customer is happy, and then it's done. Some things cannot be resolved at level one, in which case we need to come up with a plan to solve that, get some agreement with the customer, and then get level two involved. Now, remember the difference in the levels, uh, whereas level one is our... Um, our, our service desk support people that are um, uh, answering the phones, et cetera, and opening tickets. Our level two are going to be engineers that are attached to the service desk or at least easily accessible from the service desk. And our level three is going to be vendor support um, people in companies um, like Microsoft um, service support, that type of thing. And so, so I hope you see the process there. We do try and solve it at level one. That is the people on the service desk themselves try and solve the, uh, resolve, close the, um, close the incident or close the problem. Uh, if they can't, then we get some kind of a plan involved and we bring in the engineers and we try and resolve it there. Now, if we had to bring the engineers in, this could be that this is a repeating issue. Uh, repeating incident and therefore we need to interact with the change management system because maybe there's some systematic changes that need to be made or in other words there's something unstable about the system that needs to be remedied and that could be something that would to the point of some kind of a little uh, redesign and uh, if uh, we don't resolve it at level two with our own engineers then we're going to go and reach out to our third party uh, which is going to be your vendor support. Um, and we have the same sort of issue when we finish with that. Uh, th having resolved it as best we can, we identify the fact that our system is not really stable and therefore there's some changes that need to come in the next iteration, in the next sort of update of our system. We're going to input the this um, information, this knowledge that we have about this instability. Uh, all right, 
So, incidents. I hope that um, we've got a difference, an idea of the difference between sort of incidents and service requests. Service requests just being asking for some kind of an update or upgrade or an improvement uh, from the base that we have at the moment. Uh, whereas an incident is where you have a um, some kind of an outage or a loss of um, loss of, uh, of the system deliveries, right? The system is not is not doing what it should do for this person. And that could just be a broken device. Oh. And it talks there about the degrees of impact. Uh, um, I think in the previous lesson we talked about prioritization. I, I'm sorry if it's if I'm not sure on that because I have another subject which is for the third year students and we did talk about it with them. So maybe I haven't. Um, but uh, when an incident comes in, we do put a priority on it, and the priority is set based on um, uh, it's it's, go it's going to be. Uh, a high, uh, medium, or a low priority. And depending on that, if it's high, medium, or low, that will determine what resources are set aside to address that incident. Um, and uh, the time that is going to be allowed to, uh, to work on it. And so basically the priority is going to be a combination of how urgent it is. You know, uh, if we don't fix this with it by tomorrow, what will be the impact? So our urgency and our impact is going to be, um, is going to determine the, um, the priority and impact will also all be different depending on the level of um, the organization that this is touching upon and how broad it is, right? So if you've got a incident which involves one or two people uh, or as opposed to an incident that involves everybody and uh, the uh, and the impact is great, that is some kind of an outage for the entire company, well, that is gonna have a much higher priority than a small incident that only affects in a small way, a few people, that incident would be low and then the resources for that would, be less. And that's not because we don't want to solve it. It's because we have to focus our resources on the, um, the priorities that are highest um, because every service desk has limited uh, resources. All right. So this, I hope, is not new to you. Or if it is, I hope that it makes sense. Uh, every problem-solving method that you will come across in any business or whatever is going to sort of follow this kind of idea, which is before, as the problem comes in, the first thing that we always do is we gather as much data as we can. Now this, when I say a problem or an incident, it also applies to other, um, not just problems, but um, would you say assignments or uh, yeah, um, challenges or pro projects. When you're given that type of thing, a project, an assignment a, or, or you're faced with a problem, these way of thinking and these way of organizing yourself are, are shown to be the best ways to sort of doing it. Rather than just sort of jumping in and saying, oh yeah, I'll fix that. It's gather the information, gather the information, all the information that you can about the incident or problem or the project or the service request, gather all of that information, diagnose, um, that is come up with your best understanding of what exactly is the um, incident or problem, and then develop a course of action. Now, developing a course of action is going to involve um, choosing between uh, usually um, many, uh, well, more than one uh, possible solutions. Um, so how the first step there is to gather as much information as we can. Now, we might have in our organization a knowledge base, which is going to be a database, uh, which is uh, connected to our our um, incident management system. So you've been, you've seen the OTRS. OTRS, uh, you record a ticket. Uh, then then when you re when you close the ticket, you put a note. You write up your uh, your w what you learned when you closed the ticket or how exactly you solved or resolved the incident. Then that information will go to 
will be posted to a knowledge base uh, with that kind of ticket. This, this With this type of problem, this is how we solved it. It's that type of thing. So that the next time that kind of incident or problem arises, the uh, service desk person can uh, scan the knowledge base and come up with their um, with their, some ideas on how to solve it. And that's shown in this diagram here with the database. These other ways of finding information is uh, if you've got a, an issue that involves um, many people or involves a few people, but in a deep way, then you might need to go and talk to those people, uh, maybe get some questions and observe what's going on. Okay, these are just some some data that you need to collect. Uh, it, you need to know all of the people that are affected by the incident and their data about them. Uh, usually they're gonna, uh, in something like OTRS, they will appear as a customer in the customer database. And there's a certain, um, there's certain fields or data that we just need to, require, need to um, record. And uh, then in the ticket, we're gonna record uh, what are the, uh, as best we can, what exactly is it that's causing the outage? Um, still gathering information. Uh, we can uh, look at customer records, um, right? Yeah, just whatever. Still gathering information. Um, what are we going to talk about there? Customer expects. Yeah, by talking to the customer, you can sort of come up with these things. You know, has this incident occurred before? What is it exactly that the customer has experienced? What do they expect as a resolution? Okay, then once we've sort of gathered all that data, then we sort of put our thinking hats on and sort of look at it, analyze the data and say, well, this is what we think the, the uh, issue is. This is what we think is the probable source of that incident. Here's some ideas that we have to come up to solve it. And so here's an example of that. Uh, let's say that uh, you're sitting at this computer here and you can't communicate with this person here. So then you would go about thinking about that or you're sitting at this computer here and you can't print on this printer here then you would go about looking at that from the point of view is, okay, well, what are the things that could be the problem? You know, it could be the network or, um, or it could be some, some configuration on my server, or it could be the printer. Uh, all right. So it's that type of thing is that we have to, um, we, we, we've been given this, this uh, ticket or sorry, this, uh, this outage, this, incident from our user which says oh I can't print then we need to sort of diagnose by looking at the system and we might have some tools to help us do that right we can do some pinging um, over the network to test this test the network how that's working uh, we can check our configuration on our computers and we can check the printer as well there's some things that we could ask the the, um, the uh, customer that they that will help us to answer that too, and so that's mentioned here. We can ask them some questions. You know, can you have a look at the printer? Is what are the what are the lights that are showing on the printer? Um, you know, maybe I've got some tools. Um, just uh, um, my IP config. I don't know if you guys have used that at all anywhere, but I can uh, can can have a look at um, the status of various um, various devices on the network. Uh, maybe I've got some more more advanced tools than that. And maybe there's some things that I can ask people about it. Now I've talked a lot about that and it looks like I'm sort of 10 minutes away from uh, the, the lesson stopping. So I'm going to stop here, I think. Uh, this is slide what? Um, that's slide 21. Uh, we'll review slide, uh, we'll continue from slide 20 next lesson. So let's do that. But um, what I want to sort of refer you to now then and the video is not working. I'm really having some sort of a problem with that video, right? Uh, but um, oh, now it's working, or maybe. Uh, so what I want to focus you on is the assignment. Uh, there is a link to the assignment there, and there is a um, Dropbox for you. Basically, in the assignment you are to answer a bunch of questions that are on that sheet. Um, 
And what I want you to also do is I want you to go and create a new ticket. And the new ticket will just be referring to part of the questions there. Um, so maybe I can get that because I had this open before. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what's going on with my computer because it's so slow. Um, anyway, so here is your assignment. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so what you have to do is you have to record using your phone. Your phone's going to have some kind of recording device on it. The perfect greeting that you would make if you were in the service desk. And then you're going to record that, and that will be um, uploaded as a, uh, I guess, an MP3 or MP4 file to the um, to the Dropbox. So that's the thing there. You got this little, got quite a lot of little things to do here, right? Then um, in part two, you've got some questions and things to answer. So there they are there, and I did ask you here to create a. Um, so I'm going to, I haven't done this yet, but I will put a customer onto the, onto the uh, OTRS and we'll call him Salah al Qasimi. It says I Qasimi, should say al Qasimi. Uh, and you're going to, uh, you're going to um, answer his incident. Uh, you're going to solve his incident and you're going to write a ticket and how you resolve that that ticket you're going to put that on otrs and then you got some other questions to answer which you can answer there so there's a little bit of stuff to do now i'm not hearing any stuff from you from my uh, from you guys any sort of comments 